Hello everybody, Amanda here. Um, <clears throat> it is 8.41 in the morning here and hopefully my phone stays up because the back is broken so it doesn't have the little thingy to hold it up. Um, I just kind of threw something together real quick. I always want think I'm going to organize something and, and really fulfill the vision in my mind. I get so excited I want to jump in and I want to make a little video. So uh, last night I was sitting watching uh, somewhat watching Star Wars and uh, I picked up an old dictionary here um, it's you can't really see the writing but Webster's dictionary definition spelling pronunciations and this came from my mom's house uh, it may have been hers uh, when she was younger it may have been my grandmother's it doesn't have a date in it so I don't know how old it is but it's it's not a new dictionary but it, I thought it would be interesting to look through um, some of the definitions of some of the words that uh, came to my mind when I thought about uh, a vegan lifestyle and what it what it uh, what it allows me to to feel and exhibit through my behavior and my choices and my actions, and also what a non-vegan lifestyle um, projects and puts onto uh, humans and um, I would say most importantly the animals because in this case they are the direct victims. Humans are victims as, as well because of the lack of knowledge and the ever persistent um, effort, quite successful effort to manipulate facts, to justify, to hide the health risks of what we're eating. So <clears throat> before I uh, was vegan, non-vegan, okay? These were some of the reasons why I ate meat, I thought it was okay, dairy and cheese. When I say meat, I am also talking about milk and eggs. Um, it smelled good. Just the simple fact of I thought it would smell good. Uh, barbecue always smelled delicious to me. When I smell barbecue now, the barbecue sauce itself, you know, I think, mm, that that smells like a nice sauce. Um... But what it, it is drenched over and, and marinating, the flesh of the animal, does not appeal to me. I smell the uh, flesh in the air, the cooking of the flesh that I didn't notice before. And the charcoal. I don't like the charcoal as much anymore. I smell the starter fluid in it. Whatever chemicals they're putting in the charcoal, uh, it rises up, it gets in our food, you know. Um, anyways, um craved a filling meal. I craved a filling meal. To me, eating as a non-vegan, eating until I was stuffed was how I felt satisfied. Eat, finishing all the gravy and potatoes and the chicken, dipping the chicken body parts in the gravy and the mashed potatoes, eating them, chewing the chicken. I felt a sense of savoriness, home cooked, um, nourishing, girthy, you know, a traditional meal that a that our, uh, you know, older relatives would sit around the table in the good old days and have a girthy, you know, meat meal to give them strength. That was the feeling I had. Never mind the fact that, you know, uh, it was a dead animal. It was bad for my blood sugars. It had cholesterol in it. And it was packed with hormones. Um, my water. Okay. Let's get you some. Just a moment, folks. Get one some water. you go. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. So, <clears throat> I believed animals did not suffer. Um, I, I thought that there was some kind of humane slaughter. Um, I thought if I bought organic meat, I was pretty much on the bandwagon with organic meat from the get-go, almost, just about, from, from the time I started buying groceries on my own living out on my own, um, but I thought that I really, I, I didn't really believe that they suffered, the thought crossed my mind, but I thought, you know, it's so quick, and it's done, and it's over, and I'm buying organic, these are my justifications, I'm buying organic, it was out feeding in the grass, it was in the grass feeding, and everyone's time comes, that's what I believed. Never mind the fact that they're raised in conditions. Grass-fed doesn't means nothing. It means nothing. They, okay. The way that they shave down the grass, 
to keep them put down the grass is not a natural um, way for the cows to live, let alone the land it takes to have those cows there to just graze, just to fatten them up so we can eat them. Land where other food could be grown. <clears throat> um, I was afraid to lack protein. I thought we needed uh, 20 grams of protein a day. Uh, my mother-in-law is a nurse. She was adamant on it. You know, you've got you've to get your protein. That's right. You do need protein. But you don't need it from animal-based products. I mean, we're talking about someone, she had been in the nursing field for, you know, well over 15 years and um, still is and um, still believes that calcium is the source uh, is a source that you find in cow's milk, you know, uh, when in fact we find the pus, we find the blood, we find the suffrage, we find the animals uh, being separated from their young, the males um, put to death, the females sent to the uh, dairy facility there where the mother is, but separated, put in a crate until she is of milking age, you know, and here is a woman who has been a nurse, um, you know, she's in her 60s now, si since her 50s, and before that, I never asked when she actually started, but for quite a while, and to her, milk is a healthy source of calcium. The lactation of another animal is a healthy source of calcium because she needs calcium. You can get vegan calcium at the grocery store bottle of it. I've, I've told her about this, but there's no interest for her to get the bottle of calcium that's vegan. That doesn't hurt an animal. That doesn't cost a baby cow its life, a mother cow its life, and her baby, and the baby cow, female, her life up until her death, you know, suffering. It's, it's just, I don't know, and so I, I venture to think these are some of the reasons why, some of the justifications, why we do not take the more efficient, in fact, the more nutrient-rich, the healthier, the food that lacks the cholesterol. Okay, I thought it was costly. I thought it was way too expensive to um, eat vegan food. I thought you had to go find some other magic food that was not in the grocery store I was already at, you know. The fact was, I just wasn't picking out fresh tomato to slice uh, onto my sandwich. I wasn't picking out extra carrots to snack on for snacks. I wasn't buying delicious um, vegetables to season with, such as onions, cilantro, and other delicious fresh herbs like basil. You know, I wasn't looking at the healthy foods I can make. I make I made a delicious soup called Ninja Soup the other day, and it has it had so many vegetables in it, I can't even list them all off without leaving one out. You know, um, and it was delicious, made from a vegetable based broth, and it was absolutely scrumptious. You know, ninja soup. Okay, I believed it was easier to get the food, I believed that meals were faster. Um, waiting in line for a drive through is not faster than um, running into a grocery door doing self checkout for an apple, a banana, um, a protein bar, and some crackers. <clears throat> so, um, and in some cases, maybe you could say, oh, well, it was faster. I did, there was a longer line at the grocery store than at the drive-thru. Um, but what justifies saving a couple of minutes to eat something, someone, a living being that did not want to die? that did not want to be slaughtered. There is no point where the animal decides they want to die, and that is so key, you know, and, and what else is crucial is, even though this is a small creature, and it, and it doesn't speak our language, it has the same emotions on different levels and different scales, but the life and the emotion is still there. It is more sinister, in my opinion, to say, well, because this chicken, I don't know what they're saying, they don't go to a family reunion, they're not concerned about what's relevant to my world, so this chicken does not have any feelings. Yes, it's flapping its wings and it's, it's calling out and it's trying to run away, but that's not because it doesn't want me to grab it by the neck, you know? We, the, we justify it by saying this animal is not afraid of what's going to happen. Well, then why is the animal acting afraid? Why is the animal running? Animals smell far more than we ever do and more efficiently than we do. They can smell the flesh, the carnage. They can hear it. It's not a pretty sight. So why I went vegan 
and how I feel as a vegan, I should say too. So I'm vegan because I feel zero guilt around what I eat. I really do. I, I feel I would like to have a hybrid car, you know. I'd like to um, have an area where I could have a little sanctuary for animals. I'd like to rescue a chicken or maybe a one pig or something like that. I have to factor in what I could afford, what I could do, what I could do emotionally and physically. I have two children to take care of as well. So what I do in the meantime, I donate to the sanctuaries and the causes, you know, um, things like that. Uh, particularly activists, like uh, my first activist donation I gave was to Earthling Ed. I love everything he does. And there's so many more. There's another vegan named Joey, I can't remember his last name, that visits, visits, <laughs> visits sanctuaries. and um, he from the sanctuaries I have found from him I am going to donate there as well and it's not about giving all your money away you know what if you can donate five dollars one time if you could donate five hundred one time if you could donate two dollars every month you know it's the little thing that, that you can do and even if you don't feel like it's enough when those people will get those donations when they see and no matter the amount they know the love they love animals, so they know love, okay? Um, the health of my family. I didn't want my children to have diabetes or struggle with obesity. I didn't want myself to become diabetic. I didn't want, even though my husband doesn't gain weight, gain, weight gain can increase it, but that doesn't mean you don't get diabetes. But I didn't want my husband to have stroke or heart attack later in life from eating meat. Chicken has cholesterol, not as much as beef, I think, but it does have cholesterol. This is the illusion that the chicken is healthier. The chickens lay on the coops packed. They die um, on the floor there on top of fecal matter, their poop and their urine packed and dead bodies. And the pneumonia is so strong from the pee and the poop and the bodies decomposing, it burns the flesh of the other chickens. They then get disease in their um, organs. They uh, fall over and suffocate to death. Those animals are picked out and thrown aside. And the other animals that are disease ridden and ill and sick and suffering are then slaughtered. The feathers are ripped off and it's a it's a bare body of a chicken they slice the head and the legs off they uh, package it it goes to the grocery store and we see clear clean cellophane with a neatly to the best of their ability a neatly wrapped chicken package think about it when you see a package dripping blood what do we think ew that's gross that one's no good i don't want that well guess what that's what they were you want to talk about dripping with blood the slaughterhouse is dripping with blood Okay? Don't let them fool you with these cleaned up packages. Don't let them fool you with these pictures of chicken smiling, humanely raised, um, grass-fed beef. Like many other activists say, these pictures are here for us. If you show those pictures to the animals, what does that mean to them? Hey, listen, buddy. What if you said this to the cow? Hey, listen, buddy. This is going to be a red tractor approved lifestyle. So you're going to graze here, okay, for about two years. And um, then we're going to slaughter you, all right? And it's just going to be quick. We're going to stun you on the head. We're going to shoot you in the head with a bolt gun. And if that doesn't work, we'll do it a couple more times if we need to. Imagine saying this to them. And if that doesn't work, we're just going to go ahead and slit your throat anyways because you've got to be packaged. There are people who are hungry. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed your grass-fed life. Mm, not okay. If we did this to dogs in this country, it would be uh, unacceptable, Okay and countries it's all the same it's all the same um so um so for the health of my family myself and the animals um i am vegan because um of the sustainability of our planet we have to sustain the rainforest the amount of rainforest we are cutting down let's see here um it's about up to 91 percent of the amazon is depleted due to uh, animal uh, raising and grazing and growing grain in uh, to feed the animals that we are eating to fatten them okay so uh, again the health of the animals I have listed you know the well-being of the animals um, I'm vegan also because I feel I am combating injustice cruelty and hate okay I'm not gonna get too descriptive but the videos where they you know are killing the baby pigs, the baby chickens, all that, uh, in the manner that they do, uh, 
grossly unacceptable. Grossly unacceptable. Um, there's no way to, there's no right way to kill an animal when it's in a slaughterhouse and it's for industrial production. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, if you are in the wild uh, camping and a bear attacks you and um, you f have a, a pocket knife and you want to take the pocket knife and, and jab at the bear to try and tear the bear off of you, I'm not going to say don't hurt that animal. You know, if a dog runs up and starts biting my child, well, guess what? To the best of my ability, I'm going to get that dog off. I, you know, I would grab him by the back of the neck bear on the skin and, and as tight as I could, and I'd probably kick the dog, you know. Um, after I got the dog off, would I pick it up and body slam it onto the ground, onto the concrete, and, you know, hurt, break bones and hurt it? No. Um, I would grab my child and I would run to the best of my ability to get away, you know. Um, food tastes better when you're vegan, man. It tastes better. I don't eat the processed uh, meats or anything. I, do, I had some lentil bean uh, substitute sausage stuff that I enjoyed. But for, I tried the vegan cheese and it was okay. I might, I'm going to definitely try making my own with the nutritional yeast, which is very healthy. Uh, but anywho... Uh, it's it's crisper, it's fresher, it's fulfilling. I don't have to eat three huge meals with snacks all the way around. Before, I was eating like every half hour and in between, pretty much the whole day through, okay? I used to weigh 193 pounds, okay? I now weigh 150, okay? My arms are strong and firm, okay? Well, you can't really see my guns from that angle. <laughs> Um, and my, my tummy a, is a little flabby, but that's okay. I've had two C-sections. I'm still working on it. But it, it, it's more about uh, your actual inner health. Outer beauty and health is important. Actually, outer beauty isn't all that important because beauty comes from inside, okay? Um, but let's do it for the health of the animals, you know? Um, oh, wait. Did I flip it back? Whoops. <laughs> Here we go. Sorry, folks. Okay. My teeth are cleaner. Um... When I would eat a bunch of meat products, I, you know, I floss. And now when I floss, you know, a little carrot here, there's, you obviously get food in your teeth. But not to the degree of uh, when I ate meat, cheese, dairy. The, uh, the cleanliness of my mouth is just miraculous. Um, I have more energy. Lots more energy. Some days I get down like any other day and I'm like, ah, I just eat something healthy and then I feel better. There is no point where I... I'm not feeling well, and then I eat something healthy, like, you know, some fresh, uh, you know, some warmed up pinto beans and um, an avocado with an apple, maybe like a piece of uh, bread with it, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so it gives me lots of energy. And when I need a snack, I have a snack. If I need to sit down and eat a, a carton, a, you know, the smaller cartons of blackberries or blueberries, I'm not afraid to do that, <laughs> you know? Before, I was sitting down eating a whole bag of chips. Cheddar chips. Um, clarify. Clarity. Excuse me. Clarity. Uh, the clarity of the, of the vegan lifestyle, how clear and transparent it is that the animals don't want to be slaughtered. They get the protein from the plants. I can eat plants, beautiful fruits and vegetables, all sorts. You can eat breads. It's not that you have to stick with just fresh, only out of the garden, uncooked foods. You can cook your food. You can make casseroles with rice. You can use um, firm tofu to substitute for certain things. Avocado is my main meat substitute that I go to. Obviously not in a stir fry because I don't like it warm particularly. But there is endless um, resources and other uh, ways to do it. So that is the first video of my life, my vegan life versus my non-vegan life, how I really genuinely feel about it. I feel that I was on the wrong track. In the back of my mind, one thing I didn't note, in the back of my mind, um, when I was non-vegan, um, I always knew I wasn't making the right choice. I justified it with the organic meat. I justified it with not thinking about how they felt. And um, once I let that go, once I, and I saw the documentary Earthlings on YouTube, once I saw that documentary, along with the support of my best friend Mia, that was it. That was it for me. Mm -hmm. um, there was no reason to eat 
what had been uh, killed for no reason. That was unsustainable as well. I want to add one other thing before we go. Um, animals <clears throat> being bred and kept for uh, our eating, overeating, it covers, takes one third of the planet's fresh water. 45% um, of the land on Earth is designated to raising uh, animals that we slaughter. And like I said earlier, up to 91% of the Amazon, the Amazon forest is uh, being cut down to grow food or house animals. Note the Amazon rainforest is the operating lung system of our planet along the ocean and the coral reef filter as well. So they are equally important, crucial, crucial. Um, we definitely, I would say, we definitely want both. I believe that we do need both to function properly. Maybe if we lost one or the other, we could somehow sustain and make it through. But I haven't looked into the science on that, and I'm not a scientist, and I don't want to advocate for that because I believe in helping all that we can. Ladies and gentlemen, think of the animals that live in the rainforest that we adore and take it for granted because we see them in the zoos instead of where they should be where they could be if we had a compassionate heart simply when we went to the grocery store when i go out for the day i grab a two protein bars a couple of apples a peach a plum and a bag of chips and a big bottle of water so me and my children have a snack when we go i grab my vegan delicious organic yum earth suckers and if we want a little treat if they see a kid with a tootsie pop for instance instance with the inside with the chocolate with the animal product in it they don't have to have that because they've got a sucker that has less sugar no additives natural coloring from plants and is the right portion and tasty and small you know in moderation to protect teeth from cavities you know um so uh that is what i wanted to share thank you so much everybody ask me questions i have another video coming up and uh, I'm going to talk about some of the words and the language that we use when uh, we're talking about the, the uh, animals, the rights of animals, um, and eating animals to help us to really look into the, to the language so we can reflect mentally and realize that just because we word something a certain way and it sounds good and we feel okay believing that does not make it okay. And this is a personal choice, all right? Um, it is a personal choice uh, that affects many other people. So it then makes an obligation for us to make the right choice, okay? I, we do have personal choices, but I believe our personal choice should be to better the planet, the environment, the species that were here thousands of years before us. Cows, chickens, pigs, goats, turkeys, um, horses, donkeys, all the many other animals they slaughter and use for experimenting. Wild and here first. So let's honor them, let's love them, and let's love ourselves. Rock on, vegan!